Welcome to Luke 418 Radio. You're listening to The Dove. I am your host, Kenneth Ramsby. I would like to welcome each and every one of you. I hope your life is enhanced by the word of God we share here on The Dove. Come with me as we receive inspiration to our hearts for life. Dove Show listeners, I'd like to begin today's show and read from James 14, which reads, But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desires. Oh, that is so true, my friends. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Dear Lord, most perfect God, the great I am, Abba, Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides all our needs, the Alpha and the Omega. Who? The Alpha and the Omega, the one who has always been and will always be. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done and for all you are, God, for being the God that you are. We pray, Lord, right now for an increased anointing and a greater grace to be placed upon us, O God. O Lord, I ask and pray for you to anoint my mind and anoint my words today to share your word, Lord. O Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit to guide our minds, our will, our intellect, our emotions, and our body every day. Shape us, Lord, as you see fit to be tools in your hand. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Dove Show listeners, today's show title is Overcoming Temptation Through Faith and Wisdom. Temptation in the Bible refers to situations where individuals are enticed or challenged to go against their faith, morals, and even principles. Most of the time, it involves a struggle between doing what is right and yielding to our sinful desires. We find temptation throughout the Bible, including the temptation that was made right at the beginning, Adam's and Eve's temptation in the Garden of Eden, and the temptation of Jesus Christ in the wilderness. There as well in the Bible are various reprimands against not yielding to worldly or evil temptations that are Got to sneak up on you from the devil. The Bible emphasizes the importance of resisting temptation and relying on God's strength to overcome it. Philippians 4.13 tells us this and reads, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Here, we are told to rely on the strength of Christ to make it through any temptation that may come our way. Don't fool yourself. You know you can't avoid all the temptations of the world. And those ones the devils be throwing at you. You know, you can't do that on your own. It takes faith and wisdom from the Holy Spirit to overcome temptation. I'm telling you. Look, to be honest, temptation is a struggle we all face. And it's crucial that we equip ourselves with the word of God to overcome it. If you would open your Bibles now, if you please, to the word of God. And let's look at James 1, 13 through 14. James 1. 13 through 14, if you would join me, please. We read in James 1, 13, this. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with the devil. God cannot be tempted with evil. And he himself, check it out. God tempts no one. 
I'm telling you, God don't tempt nobody. And that's so true. You know, you some people may say, yeah, you know, God be tempting me, you know, just to see if how faithful I am. No, that ain't God tempting you. <laughs> that ain't what the word of God says, that's for sure. Let's take a look at understanding temptation. Temptation is not sin itself. Rather, it's the lure to sin. It's essential to recognize that God doesn't tempt us, but our own desires draw us away. Adam and Eve faced temptation in the garden, as did Jesus during his 40 days in the wilderness. We see from these instances that temptation is a universal human experience. Now, the nature of temptation, temptation often rises from our human desire, desires for pleasure, power, and recognition. Remember, Jesus was tempted with these same desires, but overcame them through his unwavering commitment to God's will. If we look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13, which says no temptation is overtaking you, such as is common to man, but God is faithful, who would not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. Oh, hallelujah. But with the temptation, we'll also make the way to escape. Mm, that you may be able to bear it. Oh, God. Oh, thank you, Lord. You know, God knew we was going to have temptation in our life. And he set it up so there's a way out. We got to take that way. There's a, always a way out when it comes to temptation, and we're going to talk about some of it. Look, here we see Apostle Paul addressing the followers in Corinth and reminding them that God is faithful and will not allow them to be tempted beyond what they can handle. He reassures them that God will provide a way out or a solution when they are faith with temptations so that they can endure them without falling into sin. It's the same now. Paul emphasizes relying on God's faithfulness and seeking his guidance when facing trials and challenges in life. Yeah. You got to rely on God's faithful because, see, his word is faithful and true. So when he says he'll be there for us, he will be there for us. Let's look at overcoming temptation. The power of scripture and prayer in Matthew 4, 1 through 11 reveals how Jesus countered temptation with scripture. Here we see the story of Jesus' temptation by the devil in the wilderness. After being baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus was led by the Holy Spirit into the desert for 40 days and 40 nights. During this time, he fasted and prayed. Satan then appeared to Jesus and tempted him three times. We see first, Satan tempted Jesus to turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger. But Jesus responded by quoting scripture, stating that man does not live by bread alone, but by every word from God's mouth. So when you are tempted, you must also reach for and armor up with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, as Jesus did. The word of God is our offensive weapon to use to battle temptation. Oh, yeah. In the second temptation, Satan took Jesus to the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem and suggested that he throw himself down, saying that the angels will save you. However, Jesus again quoted scripture saying that one should not test God would do not tempt the Lord your God. So here again, when you are tempted, 
tempted, you must reach for and armor up with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, as Jesus did. God's word is our offensive weapon to use in battle against temptation. Lastly, Satan took Jesus to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world offering them to him if he would bow down and worship him. Jesus firmly rejected this offer, stating that worship belongs only to God and for Satan to get behind him. After resisting these temptations, the devil departed and angels came to minister to Jesus. This interaction showcases Jesus' strength of character, reliance on scripture as an offensive weapon against the devil when tempted, and his commitment to God's will despite facing significant temptations from the devil. Memorizing and mediating and Concentrating on God's word equips us to resist the devil's schemes. Regular prayer strengthens our relationship with God, providing the strength needed to overcome temptation. We see in the book of Luke 22, 39 through 41, Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 41, where Jesus shortly before his crucifixion goes to the Mount of Olives to pray as was his custom. He tells his disciples to pray so that they won't fall into temptation. Then he withdraws from them and goes not far from them and then kneels down and prays. Here we see the emotional, the emotional turmoil that Jesus is facing as he prays to God, knowing right before that he's going to be crucified, knowing the challenges that he has that lies ahead. And seeking accountability, James 5, 16, when we seek an accountability for temptation, James 5, 16 reads, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This verse encourages us to confess our sins to one another and pray for each other. Sharing our struggles with trusted brothers and sisters creates a supportive environment that helps us resist temptation. Let us look deeper at this verse, though. Just a couple of little parts in it. Confess your sins to each other, as the first part of this verse says. We are encouraged as believers to confess our sins to one another. Confession, you see, is a vital aspect of acknowledging one's mistakes and seeking forgiveness. As a Christian, our confession is to foster an environment of openness, humility, and accountability to our sins and our wrongdoings. You know, things we have been tempted of. The second part, pray for each other. Here, James also urges us to pray for each other. When we pray for others, we intercede on the behalf of others, seeking God's guidance, his blessings, and healing for fellow believers. This other part, so that you may be healed. This verse indicates that through confession and intercessory prayer, healing, both spiritual and physical, is possible. This verse also refers to the healing from the burden of sin and guilt, as well as God's intervention to heal physical ailments. The prayer of the righteous person is powerful and effective. The last part of this verse, James emphasizes the effectiveness of earnest and righteous prayers. The prayers of those who live in accordance with God's principles and strive to be righteous are especially impactful and have power to reach God. Mm, mm, mm. 
Righteous prayers are seen as having a strong connection to God's will and can bring about answered prayers. Oh my goodness, righteous prayer avail as much. Oh yes. Let's look at fleeing temptation. Joseph's example in Genesis 39 teaches us to flee from temptation rather than entertainment. I know this very well. I used to not flee when temptation came my way and end up in a pickle, I tell you sometimes. Avoiding compromising situation is a proactive step in resisting the devil's advances. Oh, you got to be proactive, my friends. You got to be standing firm like you put on that whole armor of God. And they say your feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Oh, you got to plant your feet down. You got to plant them deep. So that when they come, you know, just devil throwing these darts and you got to duck left and duck right. Your feet are firmly planted so you don't fall. Mm -hmm. You don't fall into sin. To be real about it, if you don't put yourself in a compromising situation, then you won't be in one. <laughs> yeah, don't put your, don't go in it and you won't be in it. Mm-hmm. Doing a weekly Bible study, an attendee mentioned that she got a call from her old flame. They asked her to come over. In her mind, she said she knew she should not go. But then, as many has done before her, she said, I can go over to his house and nothing's going to happen. I'm just going to go over there and talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. As soon as she got there, she, asked, you know, he asked her, uh, you know, if you'd like to have a drink, you know, she refused it, which was good. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's good to refuse that alcohol when you go and know somebody else talking about I'm just going to talk. Oh, boy, I tell you, it's good that she refused it. You know, they don't call them spirits for nothing. And those spirits, they can loosen inhibitions for sure and make you lose your mind and not think about nothing but what you want to do. That's how the devil creeps in. So she did well by turning down the alcoholic beverage offered. She said she was just going to go over there just to talk and see an old flame. Mm -hmm. But what she went ahead on and did and not turned down was the acts like lust and fornication as she had relations I'll say with him that same visit mm -hmm. you see if she had not placed herself in that situation physically she would not have had the guilt she had she felt afterwards yeah, and also <laughs> the repentance prayer she says she did when she got home after she felt and paid attention finally to the Holy Spirit as it convicted her of her sin. If this happened with the Holy Spirit like when I made my mistakes back in the day, then I know that she likely ignored the Holy Spirit when she heard that small voice telling her not to go before she left her house, but likely ignored him, thinking she could handle temptation on her own. I think we all have done this in our lives. All of us ignored the Holy Spirit and tried to handle temptation on our own and ended up flat on our faces, begging God to forgive us for the mess we made. Oh, yeah. I think we all have done that. You know, you hear that small voice and don't, don't go over there. Don't do that. You know, you, you changing your life, especially in that walk when you first give your life to Christ and the devil start throwing all these little smaller things from your old self, that old man cropping up, you know. You got to put on the whole armor. I tell you, because you can't slip. If you slip, you ignore the Holy Spirit, that little small voice telling you, 
you know better. And you're going to know it and go ahead. Oh, I can go ahead. I'm just going to go over here for a minute and see how they doing, you know. You know, you go hang out with your old friends too, right? Oh, I'm just going to go over here and see how they've been doing. They having, I know they're having fun over there at their party. You know, you step over to that party. Next thing you know, you're smoking weed. You're drinking. You're over there. Got a whole bunch of guys over there checking you out, looking at you. And there you go. Got an old boyfriend, you know. And and there you go, done smoke some weed and had some drinks and drunk whatever you had. And next thing you know, all your inhibitions come down. That curtain, that strong strength, that focus that you had on not sinning, there you go, just dripping. The devil's like, yeah, I got you again, didn't I? And that's all he's saying. He just wants to steal, kill, and destroy us. That's all he wants to do. We have to put on the whole armor of God, keep it on, not put ourselves in those kind of situations. The reward of overcoming temptation. Let's talk about the reward that we get for overcoming temptation. In James 1, 12, the Bible says this, blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. We see in the book of Revelations, chapter 3, verse 21, as it reads, To the one who is victorious, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Woo-hoo! This verse is a message of encouragement to remain faithful, to persevere through challenges of temptation and to look forward to the reward of sharing in the glorious presence and authority of Christ. What you talking about? You don't want this now. You know, don't you want? To, to be in the glorious presence of the Lord and share in the authority of Christ? Right now, what you got authority over? You got over your house, your kids, and if your kids gone, you ain't got it over nothing but yourself. It speaks of being co-heirs with Christ in his kingdom. What could be better? There is nothing better, I tell you. It ain't around hell and this earth, that's for sure. Our victory over temptation not only brings us closer to God, but also positions us for eternal rewards. Mm -mm -mm. James 1, 13 through 15 discusses the nature of temptation and the consequences of giving in to it. It emphasizes that God does not tempt anyone with evil desires as temptation evolves from our own eternal appetites and longings. That's where temptation comes from. When we have desires that are entertained and allowed to grow, they can give birth to sinful actions. Temptation itself is not a sin, but if allowed to grow, oh, the end result in this progression leads at the end to spiritual death. You know, that lake of fire. This verse emphasizes the importance of self-control and the need to resist yielding to temptation in order to avoid the destructive path of sin and eternal death. We must remember that temptation is not a sign of weakness. It is an opportunity for spiritual growth when we're tempted. It is through overcoming temptation that we develop perseverance and maturity in our faith. Remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the evidence of things not seen. Let's commit to daily prayer, scripture reading, and seeking accountability so that we may overcome temptation and draw closer to God's heart. We may find encouragement in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, knowing that God is faithful and will provide a way out. That's encouragement right there. Let us stand strong in the face of temptation, relying on the 
power of the Holy Spirit to guide us. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit when we get the fruits, when we give ourselves to Christ and the Holy Spirit fills us, that fruit will help us through being tempted. You know, that fruit of patience, that fruit of goodness, that fruit of faithfulness and when we tempted that fruit of self-control. <laughs> oh yeah, that's how we get past it and put on that whole arm of God. We need to thank Jesus for the gifts of the fruit of the Spirit to help us to be strong in the battle against temptation. Praise the Lord for the Holy Spirit. Amen. You know, we just went over just a few examples of forms of temptation that's in the Bible so we can learn from them. The overarching message is to remain steadfast in faith, resist evil, and rely on God's strength and not our own to overcome any and every type of temptation. We at Luke 418 Church, we invite you to join us by logging into www.luke418church.org and click on the online membership link at the top of the page and fill out your information along with your membership request. And for those who request baptism, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and fill out the contact information along with your request in the message box to be baptized virtually and you'll be contacted. To hear the top 40 songs in spirit-filled gospel music 24-7, 365. Woo-hoo. Now, this music along with the most wonderful podcast that share the words of God can be downloaded at the Luke 418 Radio Network app. That's what you download from your app store. And you can listen by going to www.luke418radio.com to the music 24-7-365. Luke418radio.com is the leading Cutting edge in Christian radio and the internet. Oh, yeah. I want to thank you as we are blessed that you have joined us. Join me again, my friends, next week as we look at how to live right according to God's word and keep Christ as head of our lives. I would like to bless you and your family, and may the Lord keep you and your family. Until next time, this is your host, Kenneth Ramsby. May peace be with you. You've been listening to The Dove on Luke 418 Radio. Join us next week as we share God's word. Download the Luke 418 radio app from your app store. Be sure to tune in daily to Luke418radio.com. Be sure to share the podcast on your favorite social media channel. 